Today, I'm gonna to build a portfolio with you and spend no more than $10,000 to ultimately have the goal in 2025 that this is gonna be worth $1 million. Yes, that is a 100X. No, this isn't gonna be an easy task, but in this video, I'm not just gonna give you a bunch of projects and say invest X amount of money into these. I'm gonna break down why I've chosen those specific projects, show you the risk level I've actually chosen for this whole portfolio, and then give you accurate buy levels when you should be looking at investing, okay? So anyone can take this portfolio and apply it. Of course, none of this is financial advice, but do what you want with the information. Now, here's the sneak peek of the whole entire thing. So it looks quite crazy. I know I'm gonna break it down for you very comprehensively, not spend too much time on it though, because I'm gonna leave the download link below, right? Completely free. Anyone can go ahead and view it themselves. I'm not gonna make this a paid product, right? So as you can see, this is the portfolio and risk I'm kind of going for in this case, right? So this is what I like to do, and I've told you guys multiple times, there's multiple levels in building a portfolio. The first thing you have to do is assess risk. And now because this is my make-believe portfolio, right? Turning 10 grand into $1 million, well, I need to go a little bit more risky. This is kind of like what I do with my own portfolio, right? So we're gonna go primarily into the low risk here to the medium risk level, okay? We actually do dive into one high risk, extremely high reward project, but ultimately this is what the sort of portfolio is devised up as. So 44.4% equally in the low risk, medium reward projects. Again, these are projects around the 1 billion to 100 billion level, 44.4 in the medium risk, high reward, 100 million to 1 billion, and then one particular project or 11.2% to be exact in the high risk, extremely high reward, aka under $100 million. So let's not waste any time here. Let's have a look at the different levels. So we'll start off with the basics, right? What is the altcoin and what is the meme or uh, point of difference, okay? So we'll start off with, and keep in mind, I've chosen these projects because we wanna be diversified. Yes, crypto itself, the industry, if you just buy cryptocurrency, that's not technically diversified, but we definitely wanna diversify within the industry. Therefore, we can always capitalize when obviously, you know, one particular narrative runs up and others don't. So we can constantly be taking profits and ultimately if one thing does die, if one particular category, let's just say gaming hypothetically goes to crap, you do have other options as well, being completely in one narrative or one niche it's higher risk, even higher than what you would investing at different market cap levels, okay? So again, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because I've got videos on pretty much every single one of these projects and ideally this video isn't designed to be half an hour long, okay? So we're gonna go with HBAR first. Again, I've labeled them the colors depending on what they fit into which is a layer one, somewhat of a GP or general purpose network, focusing on enterprise and web two to web three, okay? There's a lot going on with HBAR, but nevertheless, yeah, I'm gonna put $2,000 into this project, so that's quite a large amount, right? But the reason is, the point of difference, it's the only hash graph, right? It's got a democratized and sensible governance structure. It's got very deep connections and huge upgrades are on the way, which ultimately could push the price up dramatically in 2025, okay? And next up, we have Quant. Now, there's been some massive news with Quant recently, okay? Over like literally the last 24 hours, so, this baby's definitely in the top two projects here. Interoperability, right? They connect web two, web three, anything. It's gonna be like the, the network of choice for even banks and governments around the world. So $2,000 in this puppy, right? So it's one of a kind solution to a, an existing problem. Very deep connections as well. Experienced team in this area, namely the founder, Gilbert. He pretty much in, uh, is one of the leads on the interoperability standard for ISO. And it's super low supply, even less than Bitcoin. So that obviously means we can experience high price action even if demand isn't up to speed as other networks, okay? Supply shocks. Next, as you guys know, I like my layer one networks because you can you can invest in the ecosystem or a project in the ecosystem, but ultimately what's gonna always drive demand from any ecosystem project is the layer one. You know, an ecosystem project might be really, really successful and you'll always find, you know, considering it's got good token absorption, a layer one network will always thrive because of that, okay? so. Here, I'm going with Nia Protocol. Again, I'm putting $1,000 in Nia. This is also again a layer one general purpose, but Web3 primarily. I'm gonna come out with a video soon on why Nia Protocol can pretty much overtake Ethereum. And I've never said that before. I've never claimed a protocol can ever dethrone Ethereum. What a hypothetical thing everyone likes to talk about, right? But I definitely think Nia Protocol has this opportunity now given a certain circumstance, okay? So they are call themselves a blockchain operating system. General purpose blockchain, again, ETH competitor, thanks to Ethereum's upgrade. They're not doing sharding anymore, which is gonna open up the doors for Nia Protocol here. They do have an excellent sharding approach. It is different to any other network currently out there. They have super fast uh, finality and stacks because of that. 
and the protocol uh, pretty much finalizes its infrastructure upgrade in 2024-2025. So just like uh, we sort of see with these guys over here, especially HBAR with the huge upgrades coming out in 2024-5, slash um, it's going to help boost the price up. And these guys have pretty much their largest upgrade possible coming out at that time. I'd like to briefly interrupt and just say, if you are liking the video so far, if I am providing you value, to please take the time to just quickly like the video. And also, if you really do enjoy what I say and my content in general, please hit the subscribe button. I post a video every single day and there is two videos a day coming very soon. Thank you so much. Back to the video. Next up, we have XLM or seller, right? So $1,000 in this bad boy. Yes, okay, I understand seller is probably not one of like the most ideal projects out there. Some of you might have hit this and gone, why? Okay, but I definitely think seller has a very broad market, okay? So if we're seeing what's going to happen with uh, Quant right now with XLM, guys, it's going to be a whole new level as well. So lots of demand that can be absorbed with these guys and they do have some massive connections, okay? So cross-border instant payment is a big uh, fantasy right now. Because existing solutions like Swift, for example, they just aren't doing an adequate uh, job right now, okay? Next, we have tokenization. Of course, this is going to be a huge market. Also, HBAR has some pretty big upgrades in this section. They're also doing some massive work in 2023 as well, bringing Soroban out, which is pretty much going to be like the application layer for smart contracts and stuff, which will be massive. And ultimately, it's a ticking time bomb, right? Because of the XRP lawsuit. So obviously, it's not XRP, but it's being dragged down because of its so-called sister net. And when that is finalized, it will, you know, definitely benefit from that. Next up, we have Flux, $1,000 in this bad boy as well. This is kind of putting us in the decentralized cloud computing niche as well, narrative. Now, this is super powerful because this will be an ongoing uh, project to look out for in the future or an ongoing narrative because just like Render itself, Flux does, you know, computational, decentralized computation, but it does it to a whole new le level as well. Better than Render, in my opinion. I don't know about the process per se, but definitely Flux has more capabilities, right? You can run nodes on the system. It doesn't just specify in rendering, okay? So they invented proof of useful work, which we know that uh, ICP actually copied and stole of them, uh, designed to be as efficient and as green as possible, no computational waste, and there is a, a cap on the hash rate, unlike Bitcoin where the hash rate's going to unimaginable levels, and therefore you need more and more expensive and powerful systems not with Flux. It definitely keeps it in check, so you don't have to always have these massive, very expensive machines. And it is pretty much a fork of Bitcoin, right? The actual underlying blockchain itself. But when the blocks are created, if your miner doesn't actually go ahead and win the block, right? That computation isn't wasted. You can go ahead and use it for rendering and stuff like that. And they have some massive partners as well. A lot of the projects on this list will have massive partners, but I do want to point it out, right? One such is NVIDIA. And nodes running on the cloud are further decentralizing other Web3 networks. Uh, you know, you can compare that with, let's just say, I think like Ethereum has over 50% of all their nodes right now running on AWS or the Amazon Web Service, you know, virtual cloud, whereas Flux is a decentralized cloud. Therefore, if you run a node on the Flux cloud, it's a decentralized cloud itself. Therefore, you're actually decentralizing another network further, which is super big, right? Massive. Next, we have XDC, so another layer one network, again, a common theme with my portfolio here, but they are focusing on trade fire, okay, specifically enterprise, they are, you know, in web three, but definitely this is their target market, $1,000 in this bad boy. We ride together, we die together. Bad boys for life. And the reason being is because we've got enforceable by law smart contracts, okay, and there's some recent developments coming out over in the UK with something that's going to hopefully open the doors up for this to be enacted in you know a massive, massive market, right? So that's going to be great for businesses that want to obviously use either the TradeFi system on XDC. They're at the forefront of the TradeFi space, not just in Web 2, Web 3 rather, but in Web 2 as well, so the whole entire world. Intimate partnership with one of the largest enterprise private networks, which is R3 Quarter. So they actually, they are the public version, the network for R3 Quarter, which is like phenomenal, okay? So... Point given, these guys are just like the best in the best possible space to be, you know, utilized in the trade fire space, in the trade fire world. Okay. So without, you know, and that's a massive, massive market, trillions of dollars. I think it's about $19 trillion right now isn't adequately being absorbed in the trade fire space, which XTC can resolve. Huge. Okay. Now we have Nillion. Now Nillion's gonna be a bit of a wild card on this list because it's not actually out yet. So this is, you know. You can probably interchange this with another network as well, but I'm going to really be focusing on Nillion on this channel because these guys are doing next-gen stuff, right? They're storage slash decentralized computation. So I've put this in place rather than Filecoin, for example, or 
uh, other networks like that. And it's because there's extremely unique and very secure solution to decentralized, not just storage, but also computation. You can pretty much store anything on a whole bunch of nodes, have them run a part of like a jigsaw puzzle, right? Individual pieces locally, and then, you know, spit the output out. So it's, it's really, really secure, right? And they have a very strong team, specifically with Web3 experience. You know, they've got experience in a whole bunch of very, very popular, you know, Web2 businesses, right? And investment banks, but also, um, you know, helping build, you know, massive Web3 companies like Hedera, for example, okay? Next, we have EWT or Energy Web Token, okay? These guys are a decentralized operating system, but in the energy sector. So they've created a part of their decentralized operating system stack, their own blockchain, and these guys have gigantic partners. I mean, all of these projects really do, and I don't, don't want to emphasize just EWT here, but yeah, it's just amazing, right? Because they're a very low market cap. So I'm putting 750 bucks in this bad boy. Oh boy, here we go open. again. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, sorry. I can't listen to another one either. Again, EWDOS is their operating system, so the Energy Web Decentralized Operating System. They're preparing for the energy pivot very soon, which will be happening as more DERs or de uh, distributed energy resources are deployed. That's things like... Uh, solar panels, for example, batteries that are connected to Bluetooth or the internet, right? These things have to be tracked, which they aren't adequately being right now. Uh, huge connections in this field and solves many, uh, many, many issues with the current energy sector, allowing for a sustained grid. This is going to be massive. And of course, grid singularity and ultimately the grid in general is going to be something that's going to be coming up very soon. And to be able to efficiently manage everything like that is going to be huge, right? So it's a very, very important network. And they're red because they're under 100 million market cap. Amazing, right? And lastly, we're going to obviously dive a little bit into gaming here. Now, I'm not a massive gaming fan. You guys know that or NFT fan, but I think Gala has the highest potential here, right? So I put 500 bucks in these bad boys. They're a Web3 gaming studio or a AAA game producer, right? So the team is fully committed. And what do I mean by fully committed? Well, they actually burned $21 million or over $600 million worth of uh, worth of, I said $21 billion, 21 billion tokens rather, or $660 million of the Gala token, right? So the new max supply is about 39, rather it should be about $29 billion uh, tokens rather. So I heard people in my last video saying, why are you picking Gala for? Gala's heavily diluted now. No, it's not. No, it's not. They burnt 21 billion out of 50 billion tokens, guys, right? And they're looking at implementing a burning feature. So, I mean... It's definitely going to hit. It's definitely going to hit its all-time high again, no doubt about it, right? Producing AAA games, mostly free to play, very appealing to people as well. If they can get you know that GameFi in there, that's even more important. And multifaceted through Gala Film and Gala Music. So they're not just doing Gala games, they're doing Gala Music and Gala Film, all right? So now that we've kind of covered the projects and why I've specifically chosen them, these are the buy levels. Now... Again, I'm not going to go through these because I'm going to leave the download link below. I'm just going to be reading off a bunch of numbers with you guys. Ultimately, I've pretty much gone from when I think a good time to start buying is right down to not the optimal price, I must admit, because obviously things can go lower, but a price I deem, you know, okay, you bought it at a pretty good price, right? And a lot of these projects, we have been at these levels recently, actually, if not lower, right? So, you know, you've got ones like Quant here, down to $95, near Protocol $1 if you can, so on and so forth. So again, this is a downloadable sheet for you guys. Well, you can't really download it. You'll have to obviously open it up on your web browser. But the reason why is if you wanted to copy this or at least look into these projects individually, you will have a good idea of what I think is a, you know, an okay time to buy and a really great time to buy or price to buy, should I say. But what I've kind of extracted here is the minimum I see the project going to in 2025. Again, minimum here, right? And so I have taken the best or the somewhat reasonable price, right, which in this case is four cents for HBAR. And I've said, okay, well, the minimum is uh, 69 cents. And so what's the difference here? Well, it's a 17X, okay? So again, when I'm saying this, I'm saying the minimum here, right? The minimum from about a, a price I deem reasonable, okay? And so if we start tacking all of these on, right? So I've got, you know, Quant here at $2,000, near at 33 bucks, XLM at $1. XLM was a hard one to kind of guess because there's a lot of unvariable, a lot of variables happening there, right? Flux, $9.70. XDC, $0.25. Cents. We don't know with Nillion, and that's why down here for how much I think I can get out of the project in this case, I'm going to put ideally $20,000. It can obviously be a lot more than that or a lot less depending on how it launches, but the good thing is it's under the radar right now, okay? EWT and uh, over here for Gala, okay? So very reasonable, 
And then I've extracted how much. So from that $2,000, if we 17X of $2,000, how much is that? And I've gone through and calculated that to every single one of these projects. And what we come out with in 2025 at the minimum is we turn $10,000 into $222,000, right? So yes, that's not $1 million, but remember that is the minimum. That is the minimum here. So I definitely see, you know, even a large cap project like HBAR over here, you know, I expect this to go even up to a dollar or more. So you can imagine these numbers being a lot more than just what's on the chart here. I mean, you know, so, and, and obviously, you know, depending if you want to follow this somewhat loosely, you can move around these. If you want to, you know, more so be exposed to Gala Games, obviously, if you put $2,000 in a Gala Games at a 42X, you're going to come out a lot better. So again, minimums, guys. So I'm very confident you can at least do about another 4 or 5X on that based on like average to best results. So I'm not going to kid around here and say, hey, you know, I'm, you know, I could have very easily told you guys, oh, I expect, you know, uh, HBAR to go to $1.50 or $2 when I want to work off minimums here to keep you guys realistic with it. And ultimately, I think that the real alpha here is what type levels you should be buying in at. So download the sheet, guys, open it up, give it a good look and uh, let me know how you go. So again, looking at a good portfolio, what constitutes a good portfolio? Well, it's not just obviously finding the good projects, it's then breaking those projects up into the different narratives, but it's also going down, okay? I talk about we're in like the layer three of finding the projects, break it down, layer one, what's your risk? And then finding the projects in the layer two in those risk categories. And that is something most people don't do, but that is something that this portfolio does for you, okay? And that's something that you don't typically see on the surface level, you're only really told once we break it down in this manner. And I guess, the next sort of thing is then, you know, buy levels because you might buy uh, H bar. You might only go to H bar, right? And if you buy in at 20 cents, right? And that's not really good, okay? You're buying a good project, but you're not buying at a good time. So you might do everything in the book, right? But if you're not buying at good times, if you're not dollar cost averaging, you're cutting yourself short. So again, that right there is probably half the problem. Okay. Now that said, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. And if so, remember, leave a like on the video. It does help me out. A lot of effort goes into these videos, but I'm happy to always do it for you. All right. Take good care of yourselves. Take care.